Uh, so I want to talk a little bit about letters, memos, and emails. Um, so these are the different genres that you will often encounter in most workplaces for our project. You'll be creating a memo. Um, the one thing you want to know about these different documents is in their capacity, they do reflect the image of you and your company. Um, and they sometimes these things app act as the wrapper to larger technical documents. So there's often a cover letter to a resume or a cover level letter to a proposal or a report, or these things are sent in an email that kind of mimic the same thing as a cover letter. Um, it's important to know that if a memo for you is a new genre, you need to remember two really important elements of technical communication audience and purpose and I would also add to that context so even though the format of a memo is different um, the the things that we've been talking about with technical and professional writing thinking about audience thinking about purpose and thinking about the context of your writing are still really important to putting together this new genre um, what we're going to talk about is the conventions of those genres. So what does it look like? What's generally included? So letters are the oldest and more formal of the three genres. They're normally addressed to one single person. So, you know, from so-and-so to so-and-so. I know that I, I still write thank you letters to family members, right? You might be writing a letter to... Um, to an employee. For example, if your job is in human resources and your your job is to review employees, your workplace might require you to write a letter to that employee. And so it would be addressed to that employee. Um, so, and letters often have a signature in ink. So it's one of the documents that a lot of people print out and sign. Um, Letters could be said to incite action, um, emphasize the practical application of rhetoric over theoretical considerations, and that this practical orientation became increasingly dominant. So letters get stuff done, right? One of the things we've seen um, over the last couple of years is that there's an uptick in people communicating via letter writing to their elected official and indeed those letters have a practical element to them like hey I want you to do x y or z um, memos are less formal and shorter than letters and the biggest difference between a letter and a memo is they're often used for communication within one organization so sometimes a letter is sent without outside of the organization um, but also sometimes the memo has multiple recipients. So they're pretty similar, but there's some differences. Memos look something like this. Um, this is a famous memo to, or I, I don't know if I'd call it famous, but this is, a, this is a Department of Justice memo. So I just wanted you to take a look at it. It's on a letterhead. It's, it's got kind of, it's got a header. It's got a, a, a deer, a salutation. Um, and then it has the paragraphs themselves. So that's something you need to pay attention to as you're writing your memo. It's not a paper. It's not a project. It is a memo. It should look like a memo. So it should look something like this. It should be on official letterhead or something that you've created as official letterhead. It should have the date. It should have, you know, right? It This, this memo doesn't have the stuff up here. It doesn't have like a return a from address or a return address because that stuff is all on the letterhead because this is the attorney general's personal letterhead. Um, but if you didn't have that, you would put the return address. There's a date. There's this, the, um, the information to the recipient and then 
there's the rest of the stuff. So keep that in mind for your project. You're writing a memo and it needs to look like a memo. Email conventions are, email is the least formal of the three genres, um, but probably the most widely used in all technical workplaces. I know a lot of workplaces sometimes use um, communication tools like Slack, and so that's a little bit different. So you have more chat functions, but a lot of business and correspondence is still done via email. Even though it's not a formal genre, um, it's still, it, it still needs to be really careful of audience and recipient and purpose and context. Sending a sensitive email you know, with an insensitive joke in it could cost you your job. So obviously this email format is from uh, a long time ago, <laughs> but this is what an email looks like. Um, so here's some writing strategies for letters, memos, and emails. Um, one is that you want to pay attention to your tone. In your memo where you talk about the specific thing you want to change on your organization's website, um, you're a researcher who's done some usability testing and who's done some user profiles and has thought about, maybe you've thought about all users or you've maybe thought about one specific user group. Um, so you have some expertise but you're not the 100% authority there, nor should you take a really snide tone um, when trying to propose something to someone. So keeping that in mind. So kind of like the complaint letter, firm, formal, demanding, but not threatening, um, and maybe even not demanding, more respectful and friendly and professional, but firm because you are an expert. Right, so thinking back to ethos, how do you build credibility? Logos, you know, how do you how do you make your message believable? And then pathos, how does how does the audience connect with you? Um, maybe emotionally, and and there might not be a lot of emotion in this memo. Um, one of the things to think about in writing a memo is the word "you" really affects your tone. Um, your, you know, your company always provides the best service, right? In a congratulating you. Um, but when giving bad or negative information, using you can often not be productive for a conversation. You know, your shoddy work produced a bad toaster versus my toaster no longer works. Um, you must have dropped the engine. The housing is badly cracked cracked versus the badly cracked housing suggests that your engine must have fallen onto a hard surface from some height. Again, especially in a memo where you're trying to get stuff done or you're trying to um, critique a, an organization's website from a certain user perspective, you know, you're talking about the website and the user, not, hey, you, you organization, you're bad. So, so that's something to think about is the use of the word you. Um, introduction should really kind of get to the point. Memos are not very long. Um, and, and the sort of, the sort of meat of it will be the information you provide in the body paragraphs. So a really long winded introduction just means that it, it doesn't, it doesn't have a larger purpose here. Um, review the context right? In the letter, it's, it's not bad to just to make sure you're on the same page with the reader. And then also making sure your reader is familiar with the situation. Perhaps you're um, suggesting a redesign of a website. And for whatever reason, the reader is not with the 21st century, even though they're an organization to put together the website. Maybe they know nothing about usability testing, or, or you can gather that they do. Um, you know, you, you might say a little bit about what you did with usability testing to kind of illustrate how careful your research is and how they should really adopt 
what you say about, you know, providing closed captionings on the videos or something, right? Um, following a good news first strategy. If you have good news, like if you want to praise them for something on their website, that might be a really good lead into then offering them constructive criticism on something and offering a way to redesign. So that sometimes helps get your point across a little bit, a little bit better. Um, and then using a reader center strategy, think of how the document will be useful and digestible to your audience, right? Um, body paragraphs that provide information, body paragraphs that have evidence in any capacity that you have. So if you have any statistics or anecdotes or anything to go with your information, putting that in the body paragraphs. And then making sure that your thesis or your purpose statement is supported by those potty paragraphs. So if you're calling for this type of redesign for a certain purpose, make sure your body paragraphs detail the redesign and then make the case clearly why this is the best fit. Um, organizing your paragraphs in a, in a consistent, logical manner. So stating the subject and the purpose, explaining the problem in detail, describe the problem on the website, state the redesign, um, thank the reader for their response. So, so there might be a little bit more in your memo, but, but making sure that th this organization, this outline here, shows how the thing's progressive. You can't give a redesign in the beginning without saying what the problem is on the website if that makes any sense, right? You almost, you know, you almost need to kind of tell the reader what kind of research you did to validate the work that you did too. Um, and then memos, again, your paragraphs are short. This is, they should look very different than an academic paper, even your first report. So in a lot of ways, you're shifting genres pretty rapidly. Um, Use headings, lists, and tables when act, when when uh, applicable. Probably not a ton in the memo, um, but just in case if your memo has a couple of different sections, that's fine to really spell that out. And then have a really concrete co conclusion. This is what I want you to do, and here's how you can contact me. Um, so to overview, in your memo, you're going to pay attention to tone, you're going to have a really brief introduction. You're reviewing the context for your readers. You follow a good news first strategy. Um, the strategy is reader centered. Your paragraphs are organized logically. Um, you want to keep your paragraphs short. Use headings, lists, and tables if appropriate. And then having an active conclusion. Okay. So this stuff should help you with the genre of the memo and, um, and helping, helping send off this memo for your redesign. Awesome. Thank you.